Here is a 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited 4x4 midnight black exterior color, black leather with the XP package, which, what is that package? Who are the rivals and some pros and cons? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and that's what I'm gonna talk about and starting with the XP package. It's found in only five states unless you get it pre-owned or you travel to them, which is Alabama, South and North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. That package is going to blacken out the badging that's in the front. You're gonna get the XP badging on the side. The multi-spoke hills, it's gonna be blacked out. We're gonna have the multi-terrain response here, which is the four x four system that gives you seven driving modes. Taking it into the rear, it's gonna blacken out the Highlander badging and all the badging in the back. So it has more of that stealth design with the side view mirrors blacked out also. What I like about the XP package is that it makes it look more dynamic because it's a wide stance. It's over two inches longer than the standard Highlander in which the grill, it's huge. So getting all gloss black elements, satin aluminum on the lower and eight inches of clearance, which is standard on all trims. The limited trim goes up a notch though auto leveling LED headlights and LED daytime runnings. You're not gonna receive the LED daytime runnings on the XLE nor the LED fog lights, which you get here. They do not have an option for a TRD off-road or sport package, which another reason why you wanna take that XP. Underneath the hood is going to house the D4S, four cylinder turbocharged 2.4 liter. That's gonna produce 265 horsepower with 310 pound-feet of torque and it's paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. You're achieving 20 MPGs for the city and 26 MPGs for the highway. I understand this is not a hybrid variant, but if you're looking to save some money in which you're getting the same clearance, the same suspension, towing up to 5,000 pounds, the only benefit you're getting with the hybrid is the MPGs. And I understand it is a lot of a difference and some more performance. It's faster in the zero to 60s, but when you're optioning it with this XP package, it kind of changes the ball game a little bit. I know it's not the platinum trim in which you would get 20 inch chrome wheels, but I like the gloss black elements that's found throughout. I do wish that they added the gloss black on the side where the chrome trim is on the lower trim of the windows because it would just give it that athletic approach all around. And comparing this to rivals such as the new Mazda CX-90, this is going to be able to conquer more terrain in which you have the multi-terrain response for the four-wheel drive system. It's not TRD, but it still be able to do a little bit more so than that vehicle. They're about the same length. This is over six inches longer than the standard Highlander in which you would wanna tick the box for this if you're needing more leg space for the third row and more cargo capacity. The Honda Pilot, which is a little bit shorter, will be the best in class for cargo because it's gonna have over 100 cubic feet. Going against the new Volkswagen Atlas, they're both gonna be turbocharged engines. There's no V6 in either of them in which they discontinued the V6 last year for the Highlander. So performance wise, it's gonna be about the same. The limited trim gets the LED center light bar that's going to be on the lower roof spoiler. The Platinum will give you the digital rear view mirror, LED tail lights, it's going to be standard, front and rear parking sensors, and we have a 360 degree reverse camera with bird's eye view, so you're taking care of, even though it's longer and wider, you're still going to be able to maneuver in and out of anything because you have that camera that goes all around the vehicle. Kick to open or power lift gate going into 20.6 cubic feet. That's how you would do the kick to open. It's more of a rapid movement underneath the floor. You get some storage for the privacy cover, your spare tire and jack. Upgraded JBL sound system and you could split the third row in the back at a 60-40 split. That's going to increase cargo to 57.9 cubic feet. Now to put down the second row bench, you're gonna have to come around here and it's a two tier stage. So one and two, you're gonna do that on both sides and that will increase the cargo as it sits all the way flat to 97.5 cubic feet. Because it does sit up high, the rear also projects that way, but I like that there isn't really any clearance from you to go into the actual cargo. Let's go inside and start up this thing so you can hear that exhaust then. Ten-way 
power seat adjustment, leather bucket front seats and second row seats, heated ventilated front seats with memory for the driver, the scuff plates that are metal, start on the limited trim, soft tech will be standard on the XLE. Headroom and legroom. The Grand Highlander is large and it should have more than enough room for the eight occupants because we have the bench seat. It's gonna start off with storage in front of the passenger with a USB port. It's a two tier setup for the dashboard, 11 speaker JBL sound system, six speakers come standard for the XLE and it rolls into the door panel and the wood that is going to outline the lower trim of the dash. Tri climate control is standard with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, put it into reverse, and we get a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory. You can also take those lines on and off to make it easier for your tow line up. And when you click this view button here, you get the bird's eye view that can go all around the vehicle. You can pause it. You can also zoom in a little bit more so. Digital rear view mirror is going to be on the platinum tier. Optional panel moonroof on every single tier, the platinum, it will become standard. Leather heated three spoke steering wheel, multi-function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. The gauge cluster is a digital reader. The XLE will have a seven inch TFT display that can also go through an array of information for the driver. We do have the multi-terrain select, which has multi-driving modes to make it easier for your on and off-road experiences. And in the center gets a standard QI wireless charger, two USB ports, an area for another phone or the key fob for the Grand Highlander. The leather gonna be around the shifter. You have the auto hold, so you don't have to hold the brake at a stoplight. It's gonna be more sporty. This slides open and it's a deep storage pocket with a tray that is removable. And on the passenger side, you get a little storage cubby right here, but it will not be on the driver's side, but you will receive a storage pocket right here. The door panels are going to have soft materials where it needs to be, one touch up and down for all the windows. The front windows are acoustic. Storage pocket is large enough with about 13 cup and bottle holders found throughout the interior of the cabin. For the second row, headroom and leg room with storage behind both of the front seats. You can adjust these seats up so you'll have optimal storage or leg space for the third row occupants. And because this is a bench, you can still fold these back to recline at a 40-60 split. Armrest with cup holders, third climate control, heated rear seats, ventilated will be on the platinum. USB ports and a home plug, which will not be on the XLE. Manual sun shades with the air vents in the ceiling. The door is going to have the same material, software it needs to be. It's larger than the standard Highlander with an area here that you can put either your cell phone or just some storage area, Tic Tacs, gum, whatever, in the lar long storage pocket with a beverage or two holder that's carved out. Sitting into the center, the floor isn't flat, but you do have your own area for feet space. Button shoulder space is not compromised because it's a Grand Highlander, not the Highlander. Headroom is also not compromised. To enter into the third row, simply pull the lever, slide it forward, and because it's a Grand Highlander, you have a lot more room to get inside, but the rails are still going to be a little questionable when you're back here for three to sit. I'm gonna fold this back so you can see for leg room. That's obviously not going to be the optimal leg room for somebody in the second row, but if they were here, you could see at six foot three, it's gonna be a little tight. Headroom isn't bad, and you can recline these seats. It's gonna take away from that 20.6 cubic feet of cargo capacity, but then it gives you a lot more headroom, air vents in the ceiling with a large window and three cup holders on both sides with USB ports. Sliding into the center, the nice thing about the rails are they are kind of centered where they should be, so they've mapped out your feet space. Leg space will be a little tight if it's back, and headroom sitting upright is going to be tough, but again, just climb these back, maybe put something in the tow hitch so you have more cargo capacity. 
265 horsepower. Well, over six inches longer and over two inches wider. How does it feel? It's not gonna feel like a Tahoe or a Suburban. And the pedal doesn't feel sluggish or the vehicle doesn't feel over heavy. Brakes is good too, so it's good with the weight there. Getting in and out of traffic, you're gonna keep up fine. I mean, 310 pound-feet of torque. The D4S inline four-cylinder has the power that it needs, and I like that they have tuned it to this level because the V6 variant that was in the Highlander was a great engine and performance wasn't bad, but you're getting more torque with this. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons, and we're gonna start off with the pros. When you get to the Grand Highlander, it is definitely a grand vehicle. Interior boasts that. You're going to have more plush amenities, more soft amenities. When you get into the limited trim, you get ventilated, heated front seats. The Platinum gives it to you in the second row. Digital rear view mirror, heads up display in the Platinum trim. In the Limited, it is more of a sweet spot, but you're not getting all the amenities, but you can still option features, which is a good thing, like the 360 degree reverse camera and the bird's eye view. I mean, it holds itself good. It's gonna be a top heavy variant, but it can do pretty much everything you need for your day in and day out use. I mean, you can see the maneuverability on the camera for yourself. I'm not having any issues moving in and out. Dashboard is flat, so you're not worrying about anything bulging out. I like with the 360 degree reverse camera when you go slow or when you come to a stop, it turns on. It's a longer vehicle. Some people are a little concerned about that, so now you don't have to be concerned if you option this because you can see everything. Some other pros is you have 13 cup and bottle holders that's found throughout. On a con, you don't have a full pass-through, and this is a huge center cluster in which you're losing a lot of storage capacity for those longer journeys. The storage in the door pockets are good, though. And even in the third row, you have three cup and bottle holders on both sides. So if you are fitting three people, you can fit nine drinks. How many drinks are you gonna drink on a drive? The biggest problem or con, I should say, is if you option the XLE. You don't get standard leather. This is a grand Highlander. It should be. Plus you're not getting standard JBL sound system. You're gonna get a seven inch TFT display. It should be standard digital reader, no fog lights. I understand. They want you to go up trim levels and they still option features, which is a pro. However, because of what it is and they're trying to make a statement moving it more luxury, I kind of wish that they gave you those features standard. I like the adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist because whenever you're at a stoplight, you can activate it and you just get off the brake by just tapping the gas and the vehicle will drive for itself and do everything for you for about two to three tenths of a mile, which is standard for most vehicles nowadays. And that will take me to another con in which it doesn't matter the power variant, even if you go hybrid max. Towing and payload is the same, at least when you're getting into the XP package for styling, it gives you a little bit of amenities and it pushes you to the four x four so you get the terrain response. But we're not changing anything in the suspension layup and we still don't have any options for a TRD or any spec to make it where it can be a little bit more off road Z, which Toyota is kind of known for. But in the same respect, I understand why they wouldn't do it right now because then why would you option a Sequoia when you're at near the same amount of amenities in the interior and you could do pretty much the same off-road if you had the same suspension setup. Turn radius at a stop point is going to receive about two and a part lane, sport mode. It feels athletic, so I like the feel to it. It's not gonna be a V8, so don't expect that. Not gonna be a V6. 
even though it would be nice to have an option for a V6. And going back to the rivals, the interior is wide here. Really the only area that they sacrificed was that pass through, so storage amenities, it's spot on. It actually goes a little bit above and beyond, especially with charging ports that's found in every single row, which makes this a little bit more pleasurable for that long journey. Comparing it against Volkswagen and Honda, you're gonna have more space and more cargo capacity for the third row and the trunk area. Towing is gonna to be the same, so you're not really ticking a box to make it more or less there. And you're not having to go to a Tahoe or a Suburban in order to get all of the storage amenities and the interior space that's found inside but let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited with the XP package for our car review.